Uh, today's webinar is about uh, tactical radio mission planning using the ATDI tool. So the first part, uh, we're going to talk about the general concept of a tactical mission, uh, including the quick description of a typical um, radio mission request, and we'll see how is that handling by the spectrum management agencies and uh, how is that being sent by the user or, or the applicant. Um, then uh, we're going to see the procedure for, for the permanent and uh, the temporary frequency assignment request. And also we'll see the concept of emission planning in offline mode. On the second part of the webinar, um, I would like to jump on the tool um, and then show you some use cases and scenarios with the HTZ Warfare. And uh, on the last part of the webinar, I'm going to introduce you another tool called ICS Manager, uh, which is mostly focused on uh, the automated spectrum management. Okay, uh, on the next slide, let's see what we exactly means when we're talking about uh, tactical radio emission. So basically, by definition, uh, the tactical radio emission is a temporary network of a radio communication system for, for voice or data. And uh, the main characteristic of this type of network, I would say, is being temporary, uh, which is uh, supposed to be deployed during a given uh, period of time, and especially uh, during the critical uh, mission scenarios. Uh, it could be the armed forces, or it could be the public safety, and the type of the radio system that they're using also might be different. So for example, for, for armed forces, <clears throat> you will see uh, VHF, UHF, or Tetra, for instance, for the public safety. This type of network comes with some um, key challenges. Um, the, the rapid modeling and the deployment uh, that you need to do, considering the, the reliability, efficiency, quality of service uh, as far as the traffic, mobility, and the throughput. So the rapid modeling of this type of network is one of the key challenges uh, to this type of uh, network planning. And then also another, uh, another key challenge will be uh, some modeling uh, of the echelons on the level and uh, topology. Okay, uh, so the next slide will show uh, typical uh, radio emission requests and uh, for for designing any type of uh, tactical uh, radio planning. So you will need to send a request um, to the responsible agencies, which is usually uh, the spectrum management agencies. And uh, you need to get into their database. If you're a new applicant and you've never been in the database before, as you see on the, on the top part of this slide, you need to prepare a mission file. Briefly, it has to include definitely your start date and your, your end date. If you've already been existing uh, in the database, uh, then you need to have uh, the updated database information as far as the site's location, the antenna type, uh, the equipments, and so forth. And uh, your license and users, uh, which is the administrative part of your, uh, part of your database, needs to be updated as well. It could be troops, um, soldiers, or militias, or by the spectrum management agencies. Uh, these are the information, these are the technical information that will attach to your file in the, in the database. And also, um, you have to have the ability uh, for a real-time overall spectrum pictures. That means you should be able to analyze and optimize uh, the network anytime um, on the on the real time basically anytime any location and uh, on the last part uh, you also need to have information about uh, your interference analysis and have all the information about your electromagnetic uh, compatibility and uh, the intermode product analysis um, and also if required you need to also provide with the coexisting uh, with the other systems as well so the typical uh, uh, mission file format, uh, which is usually the SFAF or, or uh, spectrum frequency action format, 
groups or uh, sample uh, uh, the table of contents on the right side of this slide, uh, which will show you all the information uh, that you need to provide uh, within your request like uh, the purpose of your mission, uh, this, uh, the responsibilities, the scope, and uh, some information about the equipments, the type of uh, the antenna that you're trying to use, uh, different powers, uh, basically the technical information. So uh, you also have uh, the ability um, to use different types of format with uh, HDZ Warfare, like XML, for example. As you see on the, uh, the Excel format that you will see, I will put together um, a list of uh, different uh, field and description that you need to uh, fill out in your XML format. And uh, it could be your uh, antenna pattern, antenna height, uh, could be the horizontal and vertical pattern of your antenna, the bandwidth, and uh, different parameters for, for your equipment, uh, as you see in the list, um, as well as your site coordination, the start and end date of your mission. So after you created this uh, XML file with the, with the required information and uh, fill out this uh, template, um, XML as you can see, so you can directly import it to the HTZ Warfare and then um, HTZ Warfare will take that into the account. Uh, as you see in this uh, example, uh, the, the application form uh, will be sent uh, through the server to the National Spectrum Agencies, and uh, it should be get uh, validated before it can go ahead and um, getting the, the license issue for that. Um, so uh, you will see, for example, in this case, uh, uh, the long-term frequency and then the temporary frequency assignment. Um, each one has different notes that has to be uh, taken into uh, considerations uh, in order to validate the, the four. So for example, uh, for, for the long-term frequency, the equipment and the, the system uh, has to be uh, spectrum certified and uh, the frequencies has to be cross-checked uh, with the master frequency, um, the list of assignments uh, of the country, versus in the temporary frequency, um, which just only make uh, for a certain pre period of time, and uh, it's just limited to the expiration date. Uh, we'll talk about spectrum management in offline mode. Um, the idea here uh, is to make sure the, the availability and uh, reliability of the spectrum in the event of uh, disaster and uh, basically in crisis situation. Each user or uh, each node should be able to uh, connect um, to the central database and uh, store the required information uh, in, the, in the local um, database. Um, so as you see on the left side, uh, you can see the list of the mandatory tasks. The data should be able to uh, store without a network connection. So basically in offline mode, you still have to have the access to the central database. Um, I would say like the one of the most important uh, feature of the central database is um, that it has to be the multi-user capable. Um, and um, it has to be able to uh, have the option for query the, the central database at the same time so that multi-user capability is one of the uh, required tasks um, for, for the central database. And you can see the other um, uh, required task that it has to be taken into account for, for the spectrum management. Um, the next slide uh, showing the, the sample uh, radio network topology. Uh, it can be different, it's just not a fixed uh, topology. And uh, based on the different echelons and uh, different network that you're trying to design, uh, this flowchart or the topology can change. Um, this flowchart or the topology will show you uh, the kind of access um, you should have for, uh, for each group of your battalion. So 
It could be the combat and the, the support or your platoon uh, or your fire platoon. Um, so this will show basically the kind of access each group in your battalion should have. And then that's how you define uh, the type of uh, the access or uh, the type of uh, permissions um, in your network. So this is very important um, to uh, consider uh, when you're designing your network. So keep in mind um, for any upper uh, echelon or for any lower echelons, as far as their, their permission or their access, um, they need to have a different design uh, based on based on the network you're trying to you're trying to plan. Um, this slide is basically the the continue uh, version of the previous one, and uh, on this one here we're trying to picture a network uh, scenario of a typical infrastructure for for various battalion uh, consists of different system nodes basically as you see on the right side you have um, different uh, battalions uh, which has uh, different system nodes uh, distributed uh, based on their uh, echelons and uh, functionalities and uh, you will see on the left side um, each node has its own uh, square and its own battalion and uh, based on the permissions and the echelons that you have uh, the number of nodes will define in each uh, battalion. So um, in this slide, uh, I'm trying to generate uh, a tactical uh, radio network uh, scenario uh, using the technical uh, assumption, um, as you see on the on the slide 18, uh, which is used for this scenario. So as you see on uh, slide 18, um, the equipment on the right side, the type of the equipment uh, which is being used for this scenario on the right side, and uh, the different VHF and UHF frequency uh, information, and, uh, and the, the type of the antenna that we use, the antenna height, uh, which is two meter in this case, and uh, the sensitivity that uh, has been used for uh, for this scenario. Uh, I'll try to show this uh, scenario directly in the HTZ uh, uh, Warfare tool, uh, but before uh, I want to show you how you can attach um, your uh, frequency plan to your technical parameters of, of the radio that you're trying to uh, tr you're trying to design. Um, here you will see that um, you have the option um, that uh, you can uh, attach your frequency plan, the predefined frequency plan. It could be different uh, in different cases. So um, you can define your frequency plan and then attach it to your uh, technical parameter. Um, you also see on the on this slide uh, on the bottom part that you can uh, enter your um, start date and the end date of your mission. So um, this start and end date uh, will come really handy in your uh, in your interference when you're trying to do the interference analysis. So uh, the tool will basically um, ignore uh, any sites which is out of this uh, start and end date, uh, the period of time. And then um, it won't take it into account into our uh, interference analysis study. So this is a very good option that has been uh, embedded to the tool. Um, with this, you don't need to specify each site and then um, see if that's uh, uh, involved or uh, uh, that's been affected into our uh, interference analysis. And uh, and uh, uh, on the right side, you will see that uh, you also have uh, the option um, to flag the, the frequency to available or not available. And uh, that will uh, put the frequency into a whitelist or, or the blacklist. So uh, you can define your uh, frequency plan and then uh, uh, just eliminate some of the frequency that you don't need for this specific design that you're trying to do.